Welcome to the Ignite Your Soul's Calling Masterclass. I'm your host, Lindsay Fitzgibbons, and I'm so excited to be here today with Eva Charlotte. She is an acclaimed facilitator of transformation, inspiring deep and lasting change through her presence, wisdom, and ability to allow existence itself to flow through her so that you can live a more empowered, happy, productive, and peaceful life. Um, you can read more of her bio on our website, but Eva, um, welcome. Thank you so much Thank for being here. I'm excited. Yeah. I love that bio. It's like, you know, allowing it to flow through you so you can feel yeah. empowered and happy and productive. Who doesn't, you know, That's what like, we resist most of the time. I know, isn't it? It's really incredible how, yeah, we all really resist it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a daily practice. So, oh yes. Oh, gosh, I'm doing it again. Okay, allow. Right, right. Yeah, and it's me. Not I, as a human being, I'm not taking action and have a goal and all of that thing. But there's a, an an inner allowance, and I can feel myself going into this contraction and closing and holding and resisting. <laughs> oh my God, such a habit. It is. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love framing it that way. Of like, it is a habit. Yeah. And just like any other habit, we can shift it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'd love to hear how you got into the personal transformation field. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I mean, I've read it on your website. It's a pretty incredible story. <laughs> well, there's many pieces of it. And yeah. it's really always been part of my life. I didn't quite understand that and call it that, but it's always been a a driving force, like an underlying current of knowing there is something more to life than this. So it's always been there, even from a very, very young age. Um, I would say that my first conscious or biggest first conscious shift was around 21, 22, when I really, I had managed to create everything I had been told I needed to create in order to have a good life. It's a great man and, and friends and home and fantastic career and making money and traveling the world and building a name for myself, you know, all of that. And it meant nothing because I was miserable. Like, that can't be it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have the abundance I'm supposed to have. What's wrong here? So that really... That was, I would say, that was the more conscious starting point where I started looking for something. And I was looking in all the wrong places outside of myself. You know, I changed jobs, I changed the guy, I changed my outer circumstances. Mm. I, like I was seeking outside. And then I think what you're referring to is uh, I had a skydiving accident that really, really, really changed things where my reserve parachute broke and there's really no way to survive that <laughs> that means you have no parachute I had something flapping over me but that was it and gosh as i was falling to my impeding death so, and uh, i was in complete fear obviously something just changed and it wasn't something i did consciously it just happened <laughs> I, now I wouldn't say that I went into acceptance or surrender or allowing this whole thing that our conversation started with, this whole resisting life and wanting to control life that just fell away because there was literally nothing I could do. Like, nothing. I am falling to my death. There is nothing I can do. So that human aspect of me, my human mind just surrendered. And what came instead was, yeah, I, <laughs> even to this day, I, it's, oh my God, that was, it was just extraordinary. And I was completely at peace. And the death of my body was irrelevant completely irrelevant. I knew I was fine. Not my body, but I was fine. And I already knew the concept that I'm not my body and my mind and all of that. But this was different because it, it was realized and experienced, not a concept. And everything was fine. 
And obviously I survived and that's a whole much longer story, but I had seen the interesting thing is that in the plane on the way up, I had sort of falling asleep, which had never happened before. I had done a hundred something jumps before this. And I had a vision or a dream in the plane and I saw myself skydiving and the reserve breaking while still in the plane. And I knew I had to choose, live or die. And I really was miserable. If you had asked me on the ground, I would have said, take me out of here. But given that choice in the plane, it was obvious to me that I wanted to live. And it had nothing to do with the circumstance that I knew I was dying in this accident. It was love of, li love of life. Like, of course I want to be here. It's such a gift to be here. Life is a gift. Life in human form is amazing. It was just so clear to me. So I made a choice in this dream, in the plane, to live. And it was not the kind of choice I was accustomed to making my daily life. And I was good at making choices. I had created a fantastic life for myself and I made choices all the time, but this was different. It was so incredibly focused, like with all, all the power of my being and all my attention, no doubt, no hesitations, not, no conditions or buts or holding back. It was just, yes, I want to live. Fully and completely, yes, I want to live. And I added this little, <laughs> I did add a, <laughs> a condition actually, I did. And that was, was to live with a healthy body because I knew the only way to survive something like this would be with an incredibly broken body. And I didn't want to live like that. And then I kind of pushed it out of my mind and jumped anyway, and it happened. So coming full circle, like when all of this was over and, and I'm, looking at what just happened, for me, it was a, su a sophisticated suicide attempt. I really did not want to be here. And I kept saying that, I don't want to be here. I don't know how to fit into this world. So life, universe, God, whatever belief system you have said, okay, here you go. You say you don't want to be here. This is your opportunity. And given that I realized it's not what I want. I want to figure out how to live here in a way that feels fulfilled and, and joyful. And I made that choice and I felt so powerless in my life. And here I am having made the ultimate choice, life or death. I could never again after that day say I had no power. God knows I tried, it still happens, but I know it's not true. I know it's not true. I know we all, not just me, but all of us, we, we have incredible power. We're just not tapping into it. And I experienced it there and it changed everything. And the other thing that made such an incredible impact was that shift of letting go of trying to control life and accepting what is and the grace and peace and joy I felt even though I was falling to my death, it was irrelevant. I could still be happy and at peace. And grace is the best word. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I wanted to live like that. Having experienced it in such an extreme circumstance, if I, if I can feel that way when I'm about to die, why could I not feel that way every day of my life? Why would I worry about not having enough money or my partner saying something stupid or breaking up or losing a job or whatever, like all this stuff that happens. Why am I making me miserable over that when I can be happy when I'm about to die? So it, it just, it shifted everything. And of course I didn't know how, even though I had experienced it. So that became my quest. <laughs> That's how I really, really got started. Oh, like, okay, wait, I'm looking in the wrong places here. I had been looking outside. And after that day, it was all about my internal journey. And now I, I, that grace, that peace, that joy is always present in me. It doesn't mean that I don't get pulled into the world around us and my own 
storytelling mind, I do, but I know how to pull myself back to that place. Because it's always here and it's in you and it's in all of us all the time. Right. Yeah, that's obviously a very powerful story, particularly, um, you know, having the vision on the way up and then like really manifesting the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if we do, and, and I like to come from the perspective of like, we do create everything in our life. And so, you know, creating that experience for you to see that even in the face of death, you can experience joy. Yeah. It's so incredible and really, really powerful. So then, and then you said from there, it was really focusing on the how, like what's, how do, how do I bring this forward into every moment of my life? Yeah. And so, um, so what, how, what was the how, like what was the... <laughs> I'm guessing it was a lot of trainings. Yeah. <laughs> Therapy. For me, it was a long journey. This was not as common as it is now. Now it's more mainstream and, and humanity is waking up and it's fantastic and it's more easily accessible and all of that. Right. It was a long journey for me. And I have a very strong mind, which is a great tool, but it can also be an obstacle and yeah. very stubborn. I can be so stubborn. <laughs> so yes, uh, gosh, I, I did all kinds of, training so in a way I can say that the journalist that I it started very much with all kinds of body work just getting mm -hmm. I was already in tune with my body I felt but it was more from the go get point of view and I was a fitness instructor and spinning instructor and yoga I wasn't yoga instructor yet that came later I'm very fit and attuned to my body that way but not from the way of hmm how does it feel in my body? So I did a lot of body work that opened up my body. And from there, it, it went into getting to know how my human mind works. And after that came a long journey of really understanding the emotional system in me. Mm -hmm. So really getting to know Ava. Because one way I, I look at it, you could say that when we come into this world, there's really just the little child and life. And life really is flowing through a child very naturally and, and uh, freely. Because there is no virtuality, persona, mind yet. The brain isn't mature yet. So life can just flow. And they're so spontaneous and curious and in the moment and when they're happy they're happy and the next moment they're sad and then they're happy again <laughs> it's so amazing to see and and as the child matures the human mind develops and the persona develops a lot from what we're told externally so mm -hmm. I, i'm told i'm a girl and my name is ava which really doesn't mean anything when I'm a little child, it's just a sound that my parents used to hook my attention. I don't know that that is me. It doesn't mean that as a little child. And I'm told I'm good at some things, I'm bad at some things, and on and on. So this virtual reality of Eva is really constructed of all these beliefs that I'm in the beginning told, and then I, I learn how to do that myself. Mm -hmm. And you could call that an avatar. So Ava is, is my avatar in the game of earthly life. And by getting to know my avatar, to really understand the avatar of Ava, that gives me tremendous freedom to be here because I understand what's, what's going on. And it's, it's not even personal. Even if it's me, it's not personal, if that makes sense. Right. So if, if, um, if I'm in a situation and all of a sudden I feel, let's say fear arising, and there's not really anything that, if I'm really conscious and in the moment I can look, there's nothing to be afraid of. In the beginning I couldn't, I would just, if, if something would arise in me, fear or anger or joy or whatever it was, that would be like a train taking off leaving the station, taking off, and if it was strong enough emotions, and, 
and I had no control over them. It could be a real train wreck, the chaos in my life. Mm. But by understanding my avatar and seeing, hmm, this is arising and that's okay. But the train doesn't have to set, take off and, and be a train wreck. I can just witness it and not be pulled by it. That's my choice. That's a conscious choice. This is arising. Do I want to go with it or not? Otherwise, I can just hold space for it and allow it to flow through me. That was a long journey getting there. But it's a fantastic way of being, though. For the longest time, I was in resistance to my emotions. So I would, I would welcome the, the blissful, joyful, happy, um, any emotion that made me feel good about myself. Those I liked. And any emotion that made me feel bad about myself, those I uh, had resistance to or suppressed or ignored or whatever, that created so much contraction in me. And now by just being able to allow them, all that energy is freed up. And there is such a more flowing with life, if that makes sense. It's, it's just so joyful where even, even pain can be joyful in a backward sort of way. I know it sounds weird, but it is because joy is, is this joy, this peace that I experienced in, in the skydiving accident as I'm falling to my death. That is always present because that is what we all are. And by reminding myself, and God knows I forget, by reminding myself that when life gets crazy somehow and I get pulled, if I can rem remember and remind myself, oh, wait a minute, just connect back into the essence. There's this, oh, it's just a, it's a release. It doesn't change what's going on externally or sometimes not even what's going on internally, but there is still this, oh yeah, okay, it's all good. Yeah. Because that part is, n is never affected. That's always, always right there. Like the center of the hurricane, it's always there. Yeah, and, I, and the way you speak about it is so beautiful of the choice of connecting with it, right? When these uncomfortable things arise inevitably within us, it's the choice. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> at least in my experience, and you sort of alluded to it, there, it, it takes some amount of work to create the space between, you know, to even create the space to know that there's a choice in that moment. Often, you know, I, I even talk to my kids about it of <clears throat> when they have, big emotions and i and i say it, it is actually a choice to to go down you know that path and and i get and i totally understand why they don't feel like it's a choice at that point and you know their brains are so maturing but um but that is really powerful and it you know it for me what i'm hearing is it's like you had that very intense and real experience of the connection to that unwaveringly joyful place and stayed with you and you you just continue as a habit to just to reconnect with it yeah they didn't just stay with me because it happened it stayed with me because i i made that the focal point of right. that event skydiving accident wasn't an, an accident there was something i created and this came out of it and i'm going to make the most of it this is this is what I want in my life. It didn't just stay with me as a, this planted in me and there you go. Right. I really grabbed hold of that as my focal point. Like, yeah. Wow, I want to live like that. Yeah. And it became my only driving force. Like everything else have been secondary. Mm. So when did you decide that you wanted to work with people and help them experience these types of deep transformations that you've, that you've experienced? That came pretty early on on this journey. Maybe a couple of years after the skydiving accidents. It's 30 years ago now. 
and of course it was uh, it was at the level my awareness was then and my way of working with people have changed over and over and over as i change mm -hmm. because i am doing the work this is my passion for me and from there i change it so I don't really have this is what I do and it's lasting for 20 years because I change. Right, right. Was there a moment where you, um, well, because I'm curious to hear how you kind of relate to, to your work and feeling like, wondering if you feel like you're building a business or like how do you conceptualize um, the work that you're doing in the world? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. That's one of, of my... Um, uh, learning points. It's one that, that I, not, I don't always find all that easy. Because in this, in this whole world, that we're all... We're, taught that it needs to look a certain way and you target audience and this or that and you build your business a certain way and there's so much tools around that and beliefs and there's nothing wrong with that and they work and i do some of that occasionally i go down that path but i find for me i'm not saying that's true for everyone but for me if i go if i sub submerge myself really deeply in that path, I tend to forget the other path. I get pulled out into the hurricane of how it should be and what I need to do and, and following steps as opposed to, hmm, what does my heart say here? What's my passion? What, what wants to come through me? And I find when I, when I can be in the place of what wants to come through me and then utilizing the tools from that place. Mm -hmm. So instead of coming from here where I'm, I'm taking all the tools and it's very logical and rational and you're thinking, so I'm holding my awareness in my, my logical, rational mind. It doesn't work very well for me, but I can take all that wisdom and knowledge and tools and they're great, but I pull them into my beingness instead and, and use them from there. And when I do that, it works beautifully. And I'm, I'm still back and forth in that. Yeah, that's helpful to hear. And I've, I've heard that in other, you know, in other conversations of, um, yeah, just kind of the difference between what it's supposed to look like and what we're supposed to do um, versus what's really in our heart and how can we be of service in the world and, you know, leading from that place, which I think, you know, certainly um, you're clearly very committed to, to that approach to life. Um, but it's almost helpful to hear that you get pulled, <laughs> you occasionally get pulled into the other way. But, and I, but I think it's like a great reminder of, this, this being a practice, like a daily practice. Yeah. And, um, and that, and, but that building, building a business from this place that is so authentic to who we are and how we can be of service in the world is like, you know, holding that always as, you know, the, the North star, you know, whatever, um, whatever idea of like our, our guiding, yeah. whatever our guidance is, is saying for us. Another yeah. aspect of, I, of that that I feel as a woman is, is the, the masculine versus the feminine way of doing things. And obviously our world has been very masculine energy orientated for many hundreds of years. Yeah. Thousands maybe. And I grew up in a society that's, supposedly more equal there, Sweden, and it is in many, many ways. And yet I found as I started to get to know how Eva functioned, that I was very 
masculine in my way of doing things and yeah. and how I felt that as a woman that was the only way I could succeed and I I I've always succeeded in any area I've gone in business or spirituality or whatever it's like I know how to do that but I had done that with playing the game in in the masculine energy kind of way where you have a goal and it's focused and it's a go get and make it happen and and absolutely that works but it always left left me longing for something else for something missing and and now that I have a much more balanced male and female aspect in me where I have the I still have that thing, the mind clear, goal setting, go get, make it happen. But there is also the, the circle or holding space, nurturing, um, community, allowing everyone to speak as opposed to hierarchy, which is more male. And balancing both. And I'm still learning that in myself. And that's where I want to let me rephrase that i i feel i have that balance but deepening it in a way where it really is ingrained in everything i do and the whole building a business needs to come from there for me now so it's not going over to becoming a feminist it's not ma masculine versus feminine at all it's it's balance it's both and it's not male female because we're we both have both energies within us. And holding both of those within myself and, and having that as a foundation for my business, where both are valued and both are really infused in everything I do. Mm. And I think that's such a big issue in our world at large that we don't have that balance the, the masculine energy has been so um, overtaking where it is go get and war and all that to claim your your territory and all that which is fine but it needs to be balanced with the feminine energy and that doesn't mean that the fem feminine energy takes over. We just need to bring that up to be equal and, and hold the balance. And I'm doing that in myself as a, an individual human being, and I'm doing it in my business and sharing it when I teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lovely. And it, feel, it feels like when we all have more of that balance within us, that's what we will see reflected in the world. Yeah. Yeah, so I love that. I love that intention. Um, so tell me a little bit about how, about your business now. Like, how are you working with clients? What does it look like? <laughs> Gosh, um, I have different legs in it. I do mentoring with people, which I really enjoy. I enjoy it the most when I can be in person with someone, like having a full day or a full weekend, just deep, immersion mentoring and then that can be followed up with weekly calls and all of that love that i love taking people on, on journeys transformational journeys i find that getting the most profound impact is usually done when you have someone out of their daily environment mm. when you have your your partners, your children, your daily tasks, your, your phone, your, like all of that. There's this, the distraction, but pulling you out of that, even if it's just one day, preferably a, a weekend or a week, huge difference. I love doing that. It's one of my biggest passion, like taking people to New Zealand or the Amazon jungle or the pyramids in Mexico or all kinds of places. And then speaking. Like, those are the three main legs, the mentoring, the speaking, and the journeys. That's great. That's wonderful. So um, 
So we talked about you sharing a practice or a meditation with the listeners, with the, with the um, people listening. Uh, and I loved what you said. Would you share like this practice that you, you were wanted to offer? Mm. That's one of the things that I've found to be most profound for myself. And it really it sounds very simple and it is, but the, the depth of the change I've experienced from it is, is just mind blowing. And then it's as simple as, as just taking space every day to be, to not be in, in what am I gonna do next and where am I going and my goals and I might need to do this, this or this, or the memory of what has been, but really just being here and not being here with an agenda like okay now i need to meditate now i'm doing something i'm doing meditation that be easily becomes a doing as well so it's, it's finding that really mindful place of how can i just be and one of the most simple tools for that is the breath and like any ancient civilization tradition of mindfulness and, and transformation, they all use the breath for that very reason. And it's also the, the closest thing we can find in our human form to our spiritual being, the breath. That's like the very first connection to, to being here, it's breath. So it's using that to finding a place of just being. Yeah, that feels like the feminine to me. Yeah. <laughs> Just in the being, yeah. holding the space, yeah. breathing the space. Yeah. yeah. So simple, but so, so, so powerful. Yeah, and we tend to forget it. Mm -hmm. And what, what that does to us is that we're, we're so in our avatar, Ava, I'm in my human being, which is really just this construct of beliefs and stories. And depending on the experiences the human being had gone through, that can be a very powerful, strong avatar, or it can be a pretty broken avatar. But beyond that, for all of us, is the being that I experienced in my skydiving accident. That the essence of what we really are, which is way beyond body and mind. And, and by having a remembrance of that on a continuous basis, practicing just tapping in to that, even saying it, I can feel it. And I'm so used to it now, so practiced in just putting my, a, a bit of my attention on what I really am. And there is a release and a letting go, but also, and, Oh yes, I am here. Mm. It's hard to put words on, but it, oh gosh, so grateful. I'm so grateful for that skydiving accident to set me on this journey. And every teacher that has come on the on the way to to bring me here today, and every teacher that will continue to come, yeah. as I keep growing. Mm -hmm. I think there's an end to that. Like whatever level you are at, there's always it's always more. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am I am so grateful for you to be here with us teaching us and sharing. Um, we are also offering our listeners a free gift, a talk with Ava. Yeah. Can you say a, a word or just a few words about that? Well, that's kind of what I love to do, talk with people. It's just an open conversation to anyone who has listened listened to our conversation and would like to have a conversation then it's just exploratory and we'll see what happens from there great and also in a meditation as well yeah there's an audio audio file and a pdf with a meditation great wonderful thank you so much well eva it was really it was so incredible to speak with you today and hear your amazing stories and um and your beautiful perspective. I just, I love the way that you're, you are holding the work in the being. Thank you. Really beautiful. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Thank you so much.